When you type child soldier into a search engine, what do you find? A typical stereotype of young African boys, lots of them, with guns. But that stereotype needs to end and be replaced with facts. The UN says there are child soldiers in 20 countries around the world, and only 8 of these are in Africa. The UN also says over 50% of child soldiers are female, and those who survive face daunting challenges in trying to move on with their lives. For girls, it's much worse, as majority are victims of horrific sexual abuses, and this harshly impacts their reintegration as they are ostracized by their families. In 2016, NGO Child Soldiers International interviewed 150 girls who were rescued from militia groups in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The girls, aged between 8 and 17, endured physical and sexual abuse, combat, hard labor, and the constant fear of death. Many who were living in poverty had chosen to join the militias for money. I was chased out of school all the time. We had that we could get money there, I went there because I wanted to get enough money to go back to school. But once they got in, their lives turned into a living hell. We had to carry heavy loads during long walks. Those who were weak and could not carry any more were instantly killed. Those who were used as wives for soldiers were rescued with babies. I was often drugged. I would wake up and find myself naked. They gave us drugs so that we would not get tired of all of them using us. So just to get this into perspective, a 13-year-old former child soldier with a baby, no money or support structure, and a family who rejects her is trying to start a new life and bury her past. UNICEF says over 500 children were released by armed groups in South Sudan this year. And over the past two years, thousands have been rescued from the clutches of Daesh in Iraq and Syria. All these children seem to be echoing the same message as those rescued in Libya, Mali and Myanmar. Each of them wants an education so they can become a new person and earn redemption in the eyes of their families and communities. But this is proving difficult as there's more global awareness than action. 174 billion in 2015 was the most recent funding from the Development Assistance Committee, an international forum of the world's largest funders of aid. But just 0.6% was allocated to ending violence against children. Sure, there are many reintegration and awareness projects being run by many well-known NGOs. And guilty countries get added to the UN Secretary General's list of shame. But much more money needs to be invested in reintegration structures. What else do you think should be done to help these children? Let us know in the comments below.